Today's video, I'm going to walk you through my electrical, the brains of the van. So I got my lights figured out. Uh, right now I just have it set up going across the van. Got my little switch levitating in midair because I'm going to have to wire the switch onto what I'm going to put in front of the, uh, the slidey door. So this is just a temporary setup. And this little circuit box has a cover that goes on it, but because of my configuration, it wasn't fitting. So I'm going to try to just walk you through my electrical. I'm not going to go into real detail, detailed details about how I uh, set everything up because I am not an electrician. I watched other people who were electricians and I got my information from them. But I'll walk you through what everything is and what I, it is supposed to do and how I hooked it up. But please do your own research before you follow what I did. All right, just cover myself. First of all, what you can see, battery configuration. So I put one battery on the ground, and this battery would fit in this area, but I figured why not just consolidate it as tight to that area as possible just so this walkway isn't as tight. You know, like if the battery went here, I'd need to build a wall coming out straight from the shower and whatever goes in front of this would make this pretty tight so I'm just leaving some area for some you know uh, angled depth perception to make the space look bigger by offsetting walls or cabinets because I can't really build a cabinet that covers all this and permanently insets it I'm gonna just build a big probably magnetic uh, face of a door or something so I can remove it and get to all this stuff but so battery configuration, I put the battery on the bottom, brought it out a little from the wall and built a box around it and there's a little stopping block in there to keep the battery pushed as far back as possible within this box. And I set this battery on top of that and just wired it in. And these are 200 amp hour batteries, 200 amp hour, and right now I've ran my fans, I've ran my lights, and that's not a whole bunch of electrical, but so far it's been working good, and with my solar going directly into it, it doesn't affect them really at all. And the reason I chose a 24-volt system, a big one could be the cost. You know, a 12-volt system, you need thicker gauge wire to connect all your components, but in a 24-volt, since it's a higher voltage, it reduces the amount of current or something like that so you don't need as thick of a gauge of wire and thicker gauge wire with the thicker lugs and the connectors that need are needed to connect everything significantly sig significantly increases your cost the only difference really in a 12 volt and a 24 volt system is a little converter which costs like 30 bucks maybe not even that and it just turns your 24 volts into 12 volts and I got my 12 volts going directly into a little circuit box and it's where I connect all my 12 volt connections. The only reason you would need a 12 volt system, I think, really, is if you had an alternator that you wanted to power your batteries with or to charge your batteries. But in the 24 volt system, it really doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to do it that way because you have to go from a 12 volt get a little step up converter and go into 24 volt and I think it just reduces the amount of efficiency so it really doesn't make a whole bunch of sense but because it is 24 volts I have a lot of solar coming into a not so big charge controller and in the 12 volt system I probably would have needed two of these so that's uh, that's a plus and without going into too much of how electronics work, because I barely understand it myself, I'm just going to show you what's connected to each other and then sh tell you kind of what it does. 
So right now, the only thing I have charging my batteries is my solar. It's coming in from the top, and if you watch my 800 watts of solar install video, you'll know that I got 24 volts of solar coming down into my 24 volt system. And it's going into this main shutoff valve, which is connected to the positive, and is going into my charge controller, which is connected to the batteries, and the solar is going into it. And there's a little option down there for connecting lights or other loads to this. And this is basically my communication to my batteries. And right now, see, so you got 0.6 volts coming in because it's nighttime. No no solar really coming in but during the day I got like 35 volts coming in and that's keeps my batteries which are at 26.6 volts nice and happy with a little smiley face and there's other little settings you can go and program this to your liking and this just connects directly to my little charge controller so uh, this is my other option for charging my batteries just a charger that connects to a 110 outlet and I'll probably drill a hole through the floor and have a way to connect an extension cord underneath it so I don't have any holes going to the outside of the van but this is connected directly to my batteries one there and one there and this because it is a 24 volt system this is a 24 volt charger it can charge 12 volt and 24 volt but right now it's in 24 volt configuration so it's connected to the positive one battery and the negative of the other battery and these batteries are in series I don't know if I already mentioned that you know negative connected to positive and then the negative going into everything and the positive going into everything and oh another thing coming off this charge controller is my little temperature gauge and this will this will alert me if things get too hot. Next, we got the, I can mention this little battery shutoff, which is connected to the positive. This is a negative cord just because I ran out and I don't have any other red cords. But my positive is connected to this main battery shutoff. So that kills the power to everything. Uh, let's go over here to the inverter which turns on by a little power switch and this also indicates how much voltage is coming in and what is connected so right now I got 26.5 volts which is pretty accurate and there's nothing coming out of the output and it'll tell you how many volts are being drawn from these outputs hold the power to turn it off you got little USB ports and two two 110 outlet connectors and this is a 2,000 to 4,000 watt 24 volt sine wave inverter and that will be used to power refrigerator uh, cooktop maybe toilet uh, blender you know this thing I even hooked it up to these and it was able to run a hair dryer which is pretty crazy because the amount of the power that a hair dryer uses well that is connected to a negative bus bar and my battery negative is connected to one side negative and all of these besides the charger is connected to that negative bus bar so the charge controller is connected to the negative. Inverter is connected to the negative. Uh, the converter is connected to the negative. And my battery is connected to my negative. And then I got all of the positives doing the same thing, going right to this little fuse. I think it's like a 50 amp fuse, something like that. But that... Uh, just everything in here has its own like short circuit protection so everything would shut off individually if there was anything overpowering any particular thing like that 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 and the batteries themselves 
So really, that's not even necessary, but I have a little 50 amp circuit breaker that is connecting the charge controller. Moving along into my little converter. Like I said, positive and the negative are just connected to my little positive and negative bus bars. And the negative is going to the top of my little circuit box and the positive is going to the bottom of my little circuit box. Next I have my 12 volt wires going every which way in the ceiling and I, I did label them see I got you know a cabinet or no, toilet cabinet sink something like that but it's very necessary to label all your wires even if you don't think or even if you think you'll remember which wires go where I'm like I didn't think I would need that many wires going from side to side and you know but after running everything it did get a little hectic so it is good to label everything everything's going right into this little circuit box and I got all my positives down here all the negatives up here and it's also a great good idea to label what you have going into it and what each fuse uh, is for so I got my fan front fan rear and then I got uh, the heater connected to it, and that's what all these wires are. I haven't cut it yet because i got to have a little on-off switch uh, working its way in there somehow. And then I got my lights hooked up with a little 3-amp fuse. And that is not everything yet. Still got all these wires to play around with. i got to get my shower light, my rear right light my tube pumps my sink pump and you know all, all those cabinet lights sink toilet whatever all that still needs to be hooked up so it's a good idea to get a little smorgasbord of fuses a little color coordinated amperages and just a just a, a kit of them a whole selection and i actually think that is it with me discussing everything I was real not nervous but unsure how I was gonna talk about all this because it's it's kind of foreign but I understand it it's just articulating it that's a little tricky but it's a very basic system just follow your wires and, and just do one thing at a time like I batteries was last that was the last thing right here I just knew I needed to have a positive and negative bus bar that connected all the negatives and all the positives I know I needed to have a solar shutoff and a battery shutoff and a space dedicated to the the circuits the 12 volts uh, circuits and enough space around it to connect everything to and then pretty much I just built this little area in with some plywood and just started screwing things. I mean, there's holes all over the place for me trying to figure out the best orientation to connect everything. But I think I got it pretty well consolidated. Uh, it could be cleaned up a little bit with these wires, but it doesn't bother me and nothing's, you know, interfering with the other things around it. So it's, it's protected in this area. It's ventilated good enough in this area. I'm not going to close it in like a, like in a big wooden box it's going to be well ventilated all the way through well opened up but as far as anything else to talk about I think that's it short little video I hope this helps and I'll try to leave a link in the description for the guy that helped me figure all this out um very helpful you gotta look into what gauge wires you'll need for certain connections and oops i just uh turned off my lights but it's okay i got a little selfie light on my phone so you can see me fine anyway i got um forgot what i was saying i'll leave a link in the description for that guy that helped me out you know you just gotta gotta study a little bit about what wires connect to what and how uh, long of a span you have and what gauge is required for that span and the uh, voltages going through the wires it's, uh, it's um, a whole different world 
the electrical world, but it's not beyond understanding. It makes sense when you when you when you break it down. Really, it's uh, it's it's just all the voltages, watts, and amps, and figuring out which terminologies to use. Because in my head, it makes sense. But anyway, that is my electrical configuration. Hope it helps give an idea of what kind of you can do in a van and how. I don't even know if this is a small configuration, but. I got 400 amp hours of battery, 800 watts of solar, and I've been running on this for about a month just working on the van, and I haven't even gone to frowny face mode yet with my fans working and my lights on. So it's uh, so far with those little those little draws is pretty good. And anyway. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.